guys, so I wanted to respond to this video that Fully Raw Christina put up about a week ago now because I'm never timely. I'm just not. Uh, it's called Top 5 Reasons People Fail uh, at Being Fully Raw at Eating a 100% Raw Food Diet, Fully Raw Diet, whatever. I guess that's what it's usually called now. So uh, good job. She rebranded it. I guess that's cool. Okay, so the first thing she talks about before she gets into the five reasons is uh, kind of the person who she's talking to. So the person who fails after two weeks. You are committed to living a healthier lifestyle. You've seen a lot of information, you've read a lot of books, you went out, you bought a lot of produce, <laughs> you've tried it, and it stuck well for maybe about one or two weeks. And then all of a sudden, the pitfall, right? You hit the pitfall. And this kind of seems to be a common thing among uh, raw foodists. They talk about the problems for the people who struggle for the first two weeks or month or whatever, but they seem to completely ignore the rest of us, those of us who did it for years and then stop doing it. It's like we don't exist, right? Um, so all of the kind of solutions are tailored to these people um, who can't do it for longer than a few weeks. And it's like, oh, it's because of calories, which is her number one reason, which I'll get to in a minute, um, and little things like that. And it's like, what about the rest of us who did all those things? We didn't have any of those problems and we still failed. Um, yeah, I, I think that's pretty telling that they tend to kind of ignore us. Keep in mind that fruits and veggies are higher in water content but lower in calories, which means you have to eat enough of them to be able to get the amount of energy that you need to sustain yourself. So she's talking about the calorie thing and yeah, I mean that can be a concern. Obviously if you're eating, if you're used to eating just, you know, a standard diet that has a lot of foods that aren't super high in volume, things like bread and whatnot, um, and cereals and things, and then you're going to an exclusively really high volume diet, right, or all food diet that has tons of water just in the foods that you're consuming. Um, it's going to be jarring for a lot of people, and it's going to be really hard to get enough calories uh, in the beginning or even ever. <laughs> you know, I, I was someone who could get enough, more than enough calories from just uh, fruits, but uh, a lot of people just cannot do that. It's really hard, really hard on their, you know, digestion and just just eating that much in general, that much sweet stuff. You know, I have a serious sweet tooth, so that's never really a problem for me. But uh, I, I do want to kind of comment on, on where she talks about when she sits down with people to see what's going wrong. Usually when I sit down with somebody and I go through their calories with them after they've been eating this diet for about one or two weeks, what we usually find is that they're not eating enough calories. This is really concerning. Um, and again, this whole, I've talked about it before, but YouTubers, people uh, without any sort of credential, without any sort of uh, nutrition, degree in nutrition, registered dietitian, it's very concerning that she apparently is actually sitting down with people um, and giving them like tailored advice. I mean, it's concerning enough that she's making videos, obviously, and promoting this to a lot of people. You know, this video has uh, 75,000 views. The fact that she's doing like, you know, one-on-one -on -one coaching or something like that is, is really concerning. And look, it's something I used to do as well. For those who don't know, you know, I did uh, promote raw food and low fat raw and all that kind of stuff. I've said before, it's like, it's a serious regret that I have. And I think we'll always have, I'll never get over that. It's the only, one of the only real regrets I have in my life. Uh, and yeah, it's, it sucks. And it's why I keep poking at this kind of stuff. Um, it's part of the reason why just kind of a little bit of redemption, I guess, on my part. So again, with the, the number one reason, uh, insufficient calories, uh, she talks about calorie restriction and how diets are never successful, successful. Diets are never successful. Skip the diet, just eat healthy, achieve the lifestyle. I do agree to a point. I think a lot of people can be successful with, uh, minor amount of effort of restriction. I've done it myself. Um, but yeah, doing the, the, what is it? 500 calorie a day, you know, restriction to lose a pound a week or whatever. That's, that's really hard. Um, I think it's easier when people have a lot of weight to lose and they have all that excess, uh, fat, you know, flowing through the, their system from their fat stores. Um, but what you, once you get down to that, you know, last 10 or five pounds or whatever, it can be, it's really hard. 
um, to restrict that much. So uh, I do agree. And just in terms of dieting in general is a long term thing. It's it's hard. It's why people can lose weight. A lot of people cannot maintain that weight loss. It's really, really difficult. But, you know, she's suggesting, obviously, that the fully raw uh, diet that's 100 percent raw fruits and vegetables, a fruit heavy diet is the answer. You know, from my own experience, no, it really wasn't. Um, I was able to, um, as long as I was eating lots of greens, now just eating fruits and stuff like I did when I was trying to do the 30 banana a day thing, oh my gosh, I gained weight and I did not feel good, it sucked. Um, but eating fruits and then also eating vegetables every single day, eating a huge salad. I think I used to have a video of how long it took me to eat my like giant salad and this giant uh, like party bowl basically that I had. It was like collapsible as well, so it was pretty cool. Uh, and I think it took me like 30 to 45 minutes to eat. Doing that, I didn't, you know, I didn't struggle with, with weight or, or keeping my weight down or anything like that. Uh, of course, the problem was that it's, you know, you're, you're putting in all this effort for what exactly? Like I've talked about before, there's no reason to eat um, only raw foods. We know that some of the healthiest foods like beans, beans are an incredibly healthy food. And obviously to get the most out of them, you need to cook them. You can sprout them. Uh, I personally tried that, could not, <laughs> could not. My digestion is, is pretty strong, but uh, man, that was really, really rough. Um, and only some beans, kidney beans, you don't, you need to cook them. Um, but yeah, to get the most out of them, you really, you really want to uh, cook them. So yeah, I was able to maintain, you know, a, a healthy weight, but I had to avoid all of these healthy foods. Um, and put in all of this extra effort. The diet that I do now, which is just the polar opposite of what I ate before. Um, I mean, look, I still eat smoothies. I eat two smoothies a day right, right now, pretty much every single day. Um, but obviously, you know, my, my diet is really focused on, on fat and protein. And I find that, um, you know, right now I'm pregnant, so things are a little weird. But even before that, um, I find that I, I just, I don't have to worry about weight at all. If anything, I have to kind of force myself to eat sometimes because it's just the, whether it's the protein or the fat or the combination of the two, um, I just find it just way more satiating. And of course, way more easy, way easier um, to meet nutrient needs, things that vegans tend to struggle with, like iron. You're not going to find much iron in fruits. Yes, vegetables, but then you have to eat, you know, a shit ton of raw kale, which is really hard and like raw, you know, romaine, which again, it's like a lot of volume. A lot of people cannot handle that. Um, but yeah, all these, these nutrients that vegans tend to miss out on or, or are more likely to miss out on iron and zinc and whatnot. It's so much easier if you focus on those sources and those sources tend to be the higher protein and higher fat sources, beans and nuts and seeds and whole grains and whatnot. The other thing I want to mention is that, you know, this, this abundance of calories and the volume and everything, it's always presented as like a plus side. Like it's this great thing. You get to eat so much food. I love eating fully raw because it is about abundance and color and life and so, so much more. I do wonder if part of the problem, part of the reason why it took me so long to be satisfied with, uh, with more cooked foods in my diet and to not eat more, uh, was because my stomach was just so used to so much volume. Unless you're going to eat that way forever, which let's be honest, the reality is that you very likely will not, you may end up harming yourself. Again, this is just speculation on my part, but it makes sense if you are used to eating such a large volume of food, you know, these huge 64 ounce smoothies or whatever every day for breakfast. And then, you know, lunch of six mangoes and lettuce and then a huge salad at the end of the day. And then you try to go back to eating, you know, half of that volume or, or whatever, less of that. It makes sense that you're not going to feel as full. For a while, I, I tried high fat, high protein, I think a couple years ago. I stopped doing it because I just found it really hard to not eat too many calories. But of course now, like I just said, I eat that way now and I don't struggle with that at all. Um, and again, this is prior <laughs> to pregnancy without any food aversions or anything like that. So I really do wonder um, if it was just, my, it just took time for my stomach uh, to get used to a normal amount of food. I love being able to eat a giant bowl of fruit and not have any guilt about this. I love to be able to eat a small amount of food and actually being full, <laughs> like a normal size smoothie that fits in a glass and being full for hours. 
<laughs> I mean, it's, I think most people go, well, well, yeah, I mean, I usually, if I eat something, you know, pretty satisfying, I, I usually feel full for several hours. That was something I did not experience for a long time. And I think it just becomes your, your normal, I guess. But yeah, it's, it's pretty normal for raw foodists, the ones who are being honest, um, to eat a, a meal, even, even a lot of calories, you know, 600, 700, 800 calories, whatever, a fruit, and then be hungry again in like a couple hours. I'm basically telling you that you can eat more. You can have your fruit and eat it too. Go for it. So the next one is poor uh, daily planning and inadequate fruit uh, produce stash. And uh, yeah, you know, that will hurt you if you're trying to, to go raw. Again, there's no reason to, so it's kind of you're adding unnecessary stress. There's this idea that like, oh, it's so, yeah, you have to plan, but then you don't have to cook. But really, it's, it is more work than if you're cooking because if you were eating cooked foods and focusing on, you know, dry staples, beans and whole grains and, and nuts and whatnot, like I talked about in the food waste video, you can just buy that stuff and have it in your pantry. You don't have to worry about it going bad. I mean, nuts you do to some degree, and obviously there's things like flax and chia seeds that you want to keep in your fridge, but they are going to last way longer than if you are focusing on fruits that you are, you know, leaving out on on your counter or even some, you know, that you put in your fridge. It is way more work and you end up wasting a lot of food, even if you are very careful like I was. I mean, there are going to be times when you're going to buy a shit ton of mangoes because they're on sale and they're all bad. They all taste weird or you cut them up and they're like kind of black and weird inside. That has happened to me, you know, or you get pineapple and it's just not ripe at all because who can fucking tell if a pineapple's ripe or not? How can you tell? There are so many ways that you can just easily waste fruit. You really do have to plan because so much of your food is so perishable and you run out and then you're kind of fucked. Whereas if you are focusing on staples, having some fruits and vegetables as well, but focusing on staples, again, you just buy those, you have them, you don't have to worry about them going bad. You make a meal, you know, for the week, several meals for the week, easy things, you know, if you're short on time, like soups and, you know, stews and whatnot. And then like you have your food and it's not, you don't have to worry about it so much. And that doesn't even take into account the times when fruit just sucks, you know, <laughs> unless you're in the tropics, like during the winter, it's just, there's not as much good fruit. It's way easier to be raw during the summer. I mean, I've eaten so much fruit uh, lately, or the I guess a couple months ago, really, when like peaches were in season, uh, mango, I mean, oh my God, tomato. I was eating a lot of fruit because it's just really delicious. But during the winter, I mean, I don't, don't really eat that much fruit because it's just, it's, I'm not that jazzed about oranges. I said all that without actually watching her segment. I just saw the, the first part and the first thing she says is Every single night before I go to sleep, I think about what I'm going to be eating the next day. That, that's pretty incredible. I mean, does that sound, does that sound easy? I'm trying to think if I did that as well. And I'm sh I, maybe I did. I don't know if I was that extreme. I think I got the planning down to like the best I could when I was, when I was raw. So I didn't really have to do that. But you know what? I think most of the time what I did, I just ate the same things every day. So I didn't ever have to worry about planning, which, uh, yeah, that's fun and healthy, right? You're just like basically living on bananas and romaine. Okay. But, uh, yeah, that's what she says that every night before she goes to bed, she has to, uh, think about what she's going to eat and plan it out for the next day. Uh, that just, that seems really extreme to me. Again, not trying to imply that that you don't have to plan, you know, if you're not eating a raw food diet. Any Anytime you were trying to eat healthy, whether it's a vegan diet or, you know, plant-based diet, whatever, uh, you do, there is some planning involved, obviously. If you are cooking at home, obviously there is some sort of, of planning involved. Um, but obviously this is, a, this is more <laughs> planning than is necessary. Again, we're talking about a diet that is wholly unnecessary it's not healthy. It's going to be very hard uh, to meet your needs on such a diet. Very expensive as well. We'll get to money in a minute. Okay, so the third one is cravings, which of course are caused just by emotions. What I invite you to do is just to be conscious of those. When you're hungry, are you eating out of emotion? Are you eating out of necessity? 
Start becoming present with your emotions as you're eating. It's kind of like she's avoiding the those of us who were raw for years and chose not to be raw anymore um, or couldn't be raw anymore. You know, it depends. Uh, now she's completely avoiding the people who have cravings, maybe for legitimate reasons. You know, it's it's not always cravings just for ice cream or cookies or something like that, which is just, you, you just want sugar because you want sugar, right? There are people who are craving things with like protein in them, you know, or fat in them. Maybe they're having that craving because they went from eating a diet of adequate protein, you know, 60, 70, whatever grams of protein to a diet of like 30 to 40 grams of protein. It's not unsurprising that maybe those people are going to start missing the burgers or wherever they were getting their protein from. It's not just, it may not just be because they just like burgers. But again, to admit that uh, or to believe that, I don't think she's trying to hide anything. I think she truly believes that, you know, we don't need much protein or to worry about protein um, at all. And of course, if you say <laughs> that like there might be a reason for the cravings, well, then you're pretty much saying that the diet is unhealthy, which of course she's not going to do that. So next, number four, she talks about societal pressures. And this one, for the most part, I agree with her, at least if we're applying it to veganism, not raw foodism. I'm happiest when I make choices for myself that I know are good for me. When I make choices based upon what other people will think, I am the one. I am the one who ends up feeling resentful. You don't want to do things just because you're worried that it's making other people uncomfortable or something. Like you're at a dinner table and you just, you don't want to speak up for yourself because you don't want to make other people uncomfortable. Um, that's just ultimately going to make you uncomfortable. It's probably gonna make you bitter and resentful towards people if you continue that on a long-term basis. If you believe that, that eating animals is wrong, that eating animal products is wrong, then you know, you just, you don't have to make a big deal out of it. You don't have to, you know, uh, preach to people at the dinner table or anything like that. But it's just like, this is what I believe and I'm just, I'm not gonna eat that. And that's all, <laughs> you know, it's, it's a really simple thing. So I do agree with her, but again, she's applying it to raw foodism. She's applying it to something completely unnecessary and not really talking about the effects that that has on you as a person if you are sticking, you know, uh, very stringently, is that the right word, uh, to eating a raw food diet. Um, it is, it's unnecessarily alienating you, really, if that's what you're trying to eat. I mean, trying to go out and uh, eat food at restaurants, trying to eat raw at like regular restaurants, it's hard enough to eat vegan at certain restaurants, but raw is a, is a whole nother deal. Okay, so number five is money. And she says the thing that she always says, which is, oh, you have to prioritize your, your health over everything else and you'll actually spend less. For me, I've noticed that when I transitioned into this lifestyle, I spent a lot of money on medical bills, electricity, things that I didn't need. <laughs> and you wanna know what's funny is that I save more now than I did years ago. I may spend a lot more money on my food, but I spend a lot less money on everything else. Also keep in mind that your health is an investment. I talked about this in a, a past video about her, her $20 a day, you know, raw food diet, affordable raw food diet. Um, it's, it's just, it's nonsense. Uh, it, a raw food diet is more expensive nine times out of 10. It is going to be more expensive. And again, unnecessarily so. And that is actually the reason why I uh, quit eating a 100% raw food diet, why I started incorporating cooked foods into my diet. I don't know if I still have that video up or not. Anyway, it's from a few years ago and I had already kind of started on the path of being more pro cooked foods, although not eating them myself. You know, I had already uh, come to terms with the reality that a mostly raw diet was okay. You know, it was healthy. <laughs> you didn't have to go 100% raw. Again, because I didn't feel that, that fervor <laughs> for it, uh, I, I wasn't able to justify the cost anymore, the cost of eating all raw. Um, so yeah, eventually it was just like, okay, I'm just gonna start eating some cooked food. I would love to say that I was just like suffering health-wise on all raw. Um, I really wasn't at the time. Again, I was eating lots of fruit. But I was also eating a fair amount of vegetables, um, taking B12 as well, taking B12 and vitamin D, and I think a multi um, like every other day as well. So I was really doing 
better <laughs> if you're going to eat a raw food diet sustainably. Um, I was doing better. I could have had more fats, I think, in my diet. I was still eating fairly uh, low fat. I could have done with more more fat and uh, more protein. But uh, but yeah, I was doing much better than your typical low fat, you know, 80-10-10 kind of approach. But again, because I was already past the whole 100% raw or die, uh, it was really hard for me to justify that cost anymore. So I did start eating cooked food again. And um, I mean, the rest is history, I guess. <laughs> Slowly but surely, I worked myself back to a, a, uh, a mostly cooked food diet. I don't know. I mean, it's so weird that I used to think of diet in terms, in those kind of terms, you know, <laughs> like 99% raw or, um, I think I mostly made fun of 99% raw, but like mostly raw, high raw, that kind of thing. And now it's just like, I don't know. I just, I don't, why would I be concerned about that? <laughs> I just, I kind of focus on, you know, um, nutrients and, and getting enough nutrients and, you know, fiber and, and protein. And that's, that's pretty much it. Do I think I would have succeeded long term like maybe money wasn't a concern do i think i would still be eating raw today no um i think ultimately i either would have struggled health wise if i didn't start eating more fats and more protein um, or i just would have gotten really sick of it uh it's you know it's it's really hard to just eat that many bananas um because i, I think i talked about this in the the christina 20 dollar a day one you know, to keep my, to keep the money lower, I did have to limit the fruits that I really love. Tomatoes, papaya, uh, mangoes, which I can get, get cheap sometime when they're in season, but not all the time. Um, you know, I had to limit those foods and really focus on bananas and dates, which are okay, but that, that does get old. If it hadn't been money, it would have been something else or just learning more about nutrition and just realizing, wow, this is kind of stupid. <laughs> There's no point to this whatsoever. And I can enjoy, enjoy a lot more food and really tasty food if I just stop doing this. <laughs> and the planning thing, I'm sure that, you know, uh, was already kind of getting old, but would have gotten even more old. <laughs> <laughs> over time. Um, yeah, so that's that's really it, I I guess. I just think it's unfortunate because I, I think Christina is, obviously a lot of people like her and um, she's very positive. I know some people say that she's fake and, uh, you know, <laughs> I don't think that's really fair. You know, for me, when I watch someone like Christina or uh, Blogilates, I can't remember her name, my first impression, I do kind of have that feeling of like, oh, they're, they're hamming it up. But that's just because it's so it's so opposite of me, of how I am, that I just, I can't really imagine being that <laughs> energetic and like bubbly. So it's just like, oh, it has to be fake. And that, that's not fair. I think, I, I'm pretty sure people can just be like that, right? They probably look at me and are just like, what the fuck? How can you just be that? Like, are you, are you sad? Are you sick? <laughs> I used to get that a lot on videos. Like, are you okay? <laughs> you seem like you're not feeling well. It's like, no, I'm all right. <laughs> so I don't think that's really fair. And uh, I guess my point is that I think she could be a really good advocate for uh, for veganism if she would just stop with the raw food stuff. Even just go to like mostly raw, you know, with some like beans and stuff. That would be such an improvement. But instead she's promoting this kind of stuff and and ultimately sending the message that it's your fault, that if you aren't succeeding on raw, it's your fault. She's doing it in a very nice way and I don't, I don't think she's trying to really present it that way. I think she thinks that she's providing good advice, but ultimately that's what she's saying. You know, you're not succeeding because you aren't doing things correctly. It's the same thing that, that Freely and, and her and Durian writer, Hurry and writer, Durian writer do with their stuff. You know, if you aren't succeeding on Ralto 4, it's because you're not doing it right. Theirs is more explicit because they're really like aggressive and they basically just come out and say, you're not doing it right. Um, but she really is saying the same thing here. And it's just, it's just not true. Everything we know about nutrition, it's pretty clear to see that a raw food diet is just not supplying what we need. There may be a way to meet all of your nutrient needs on a diet. I mean, again, you do need supplements. You need B12 and you're probably going to need D unless you're in the sun all the time, which uh, enjoy skin cancer. But yeah, I mean, if you can handle like sprouted 
you know, beans and you can get enough protein um, and you're eating, you know, lots of nuts and avocado and, and whatnot, there probably is a way to meet needs on a raw food diet. Again, it's not necessary, but I guess there is a way to do it. But the way that she's promoting it, um, it's just, it's just not. It's, um, it's unnecessary and it's harmful and it's unsustainable and it's unappealing to most people. And uh, yeah, it's, it's unfortunate. I guess there's another un word. So yeah, that's it. That's uh, my take on that video and a little bit of my experience on eating um, raw. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those down below. If you want to subscribe, subscribe. And I will have a new video 